This week on Vaticano, we bring you the story of the first millennial blessed, Carlo Acutis. Travel with us from Italy to the United States, from Cambodia to Argentina, to learn about how his charisma continues to inspire young people worldwide. And we'll make a stop in Assisi to see how the city is preparing for his beatification. For this and more, Vaticano starts now. Carlo Acutis, who's set to be beatified on October the 10th, grew up here in Milan, Italy. Today, Carlo is known and loved across the world for his example of holiness, for his passion for communications technology, and for his devotion to the Eucharist. Antonia Salzano, Carlo's mother, says her son made living the ordinary extraordinary. So even the little things in life, from everyday life, obviously being a boy of our times, he lived what all the young people of his generation lived. So computers, video games, football games, school, friends, everything that is normal to us. But certainly he knew. Everything that is ordinary in the world, he was able to turn into something extraordinary. Carlo's passion was the world of information technology. He was fascinated with the potential good it could bring. He decided to create a web-based resource where people could learn about the faith. Today, it's an apostolate that his family and members of the Association of Friends of Carlo Acutis continue to carry on. He was very good at filming, making films, and even using computers. What's more is that Pope Francis in Christus Vivid, which is the closing document of the Synod of Young People, wanted to dedicate a chapter to Carlo, in which he practically presents Carlo to all the young people all over the world as a model for how he was able to use the media. Above all, what he has done there are these exhibitions that were, above all, the one on Our Lady, on the Eucharistic miracles, which we say he then, for extraordinary coincidences, above all by, in our opinion, by the will of the Lord, then they spread throughout the world. The work that Carlo started now is available in 17 languages, and anyone can see the Eucharistic Miracles exhibit, even downloading the panels in high quality for free to print and place them in their parishes. The exhibition on Eucharistic miracles was something that engaged him. Let's start from about when he was 11 years old, the period that he began to be assistant catechist in the parish, because he had asked to be a catechist helper, and then sometimes he was able to teach the catechism by himself, because he was a very prepared boy, very ahead of those who were his age. Apart from the web resources, the association Amici di Carlo Acutis has also started producing cartoons to bring Carlo's message to children and young people. Joy is already to be found in this world. Already in this world? Of course, but we must always look towards God. In fact, sorrow is what happens when we look inwards, while joy is when we focus our gaze on God. By nourishing ourselves on the Eucharist, we feed on the love of Christ and we live in Him. In this way, we can all become close friends with Christ. Antonia says that after his first communion at seven years of age, he never missed an opportunity to receive the Eucharist because it was his source of strength to live life with integrity. His deep faith and special relationship with the Eucharist helped even his mother to find her own path back to the church. 
juzgarlo, yo digo. Carla, I always say, was a little savior for me. Because usually in families, it is the family who passes on the faith. In my case, it was the opposite. It is Carla who, in fact, Carlo, I saw him a bit like a father, an authoritative figure. I did not see him so much as a son. That is, I felt him, yes, son. But I also saw him as something more. Because Carla had this authority that was given to him, precisely by his closeness to Jesus, that one could see. She believes that Carlo continues to intercede from heaven, showing others the path to the church through the Eucharist. Upstate New York, around a two-hour drive from Manhattan, located in a valley among hills, is the town of Pauling, with a population of seven and a half thousand people. It's a small, quiet town with a vibrant Catholic population, and in the local church, St. John the Evangelist, St. Charles Borromeo, there's a special exhibition happening at the moment. Large posters carefully placed in the pews beautifully illustrate miracles of the Blessed Eucharist. This is the Eucharistic Miracles of the World exhibition, designed and created by Carlo Acutis. Father John Palatucci is the pastor here. Well, this exhibition, uh, we started it, um, actually when I first arrived here, it was already here to promote the reality of the Eucharist. Uh, you know, we live in a time, unfortunately, where many Catholics are struggling with that belief. As a matter of fact, I think here in the States, there was a, something done recently about that, and nearly 60% of Catholics do not believe presence of our Lord in the Eucharist, which is a real challenge, you know. So the message is to get people to understand the miracles that actually have taken place over the centuries with the presence of our Lord in the Eucharist. So that's one of the primary things that we're doing here at the parish. Inside the church, each poster tells a story of a miracle from a different part of the world, detailing what took place, eyewitness accounts, and scientific verification. Because of the COVID-19 situation, we have to separate our pews and close some pews down. So it was a good idea to put them in those spots People come in uh, before Mass, they could read about the Eucharist and maybe elevate their belief uh, in the real presence of our Lord. Local parishioners stroll from poster to poster, taking their time to read the various accounts of the miracles. I didn't realize there were so many miracles. It's interesting, I enjoyed the one from Spain where the priest was going to take host to some sick people. And while crossing a river, he dropped the host into the water. And so he, was, he got out and he was stuck in the mud. And so some fishermen came over and um, they witnessed, they looked and there were three fish with hosts in their mouth. And they swam up the river and put the host back in the cup. Over the past several years, I think there's been a, a, a pulling away from the belief of of God in the Eucharist, Christ in the Eucharist. And I think through these miracles that they would have renewed interest and they would realize uh, the beauty of, of receiving God. In Pauling, this little town, my family is the fifth generation in this church. And they never had, they were wonderful priests, but we never had some of these wonderful examples and of what can happen to people when they believe. Among those here today is Jack Miller, the man who brought this exhibition to Pauling and oversees it. I was always in awe of the, uh, the way in which our Lord provides these miracles and, and, and mysteries of our faith and how the miracles then prove those uh, mysteries of our faith. 
there were so many and, and all such different stories of, in such amazing manners. E each one has a unique story to it. Each, each, each miracle is a, a separate miracle and they're all miracles. How could you look at any one of them and not be amazed by it? From what started as an idea of Carlo Acutis, it's grown into a worldwide exhibition, bringing stories of Eucharistic miracles to all corners of the globe. Well, as I look around at all these posters, I think of the, the young man, this 15-year-old boy, who, with inspiration and, and the grace of God, was able to reach out to millions of people and, and change their lives, hopefully, to realize the presence of Christ in the Eucharist. I gotta watch because I might tear up, but if we actually realized what we were receiving as the host touched our tongue, we would drop dead of joy. That's my firm belief. It's to promote the true understanding and belief of our Lord's true presence in the Eucharist. And these posters should be here until everyone in this parish understands and believes that. Father Will Conquer is a missionary of the Society of Foreign Missions of Paris in Cambodia. He learned about Carlo through the exhibition of Eucharistic Miracles in Rome in 2006. And ever since, Carlo has inspired him, giving an example of a new model of holiness. As I started researching, doing research about him, I realized how extraordinary his short life had been, and it really taught me a lot. I was blessed to meet with his family. I was especially touched by the encounter with Rajesh, who was uh, probably Carlo's best friend and uh, a worker in his family, and who eventually himself became Christian through the witness of Carlo. I was also touched by the encounter with Flavia, his cousin, his cousin who, like many of our cousins and families and brothers and sisters, had an experience of Christ, but slowly, slowly, slowly go away and kind of forget about their first love. And I was so blessed because when I met her last year, she was coming back to the faith through, through, she says, the intercession of Carlo. And I was so happy to be able to share this witness of faith that she had shared with Carlo. To be able to share it with her it was like meeting someone who had met a living saint, which was quite extraordinary for me. And so today as a missionary in Cambodia, my life is totally different, so far from what Carlo had known, but the mission is the same. It is to share the joy of the gospel with all people. And here is so urgent. With new technologies, the world is borderless for evangelization. And by using new technologies as Carlo did, everyone can contribute and fulfill the mandate of Christ to bring the gospel to every corner of the world. Diego Oliveira from the Carlo Acutis Association in Argentina is also inspired by Carlo's charism of online evangelization. In Latin America and in the world, they see Carlo as a friend. His love for informatics stands out. He considered the internet as a way of evangelization. Today, I affirm that he continues to evangelize through the web, and that is why he has reached the five continents. He continues to announce Jesus through new technologies. This is Carlo's secret. Carlo today is still alive in all the devotees through the social networks. In addition to the radio programs and online evangelization, the whole diocese of Rioja, Argentina, is preparing to celebrate the beatification of Carlo. Assisi is known as the city of St. Francis and St. Clair. And for hundreds of years, these two saints have inspired young people to be holy. Soon the city will be associated with another blessing. Father Carlos Ferreira, rector of the Santuario de la Spoliazione, is proud that Carlo Acutis has found his home here inside the church of St. Mary Major. 
sono I am amazed at how many people pass by here every day. It has decreased somewhat with the health emergency, but I can say the fact that people from all continents pass through here is incredible. Seeing people of all ages, and also the priests, bishops, nuns, and many young people, children, adults, and families. It is a phenomenon that truly only the Holy Spirit can explain, as a boy of only 15 years can draw in so many people. Then, I also like to listen to the stories of many of these people who come asking for a variety of requests, from personal conversion to physical and moral healing. And I really like the story of a young man of only 20 years old who said that it was by accident or chance he found Carlo on the internet. He had some insight in his life, then he had a dream with Carlo, which he did not expect. And from there, began a friendship with him. And this young man was suffering from panic attacks. And he came here to the sanctuary to thank God and Carlo for his healing, because it had been two months since any attack. And he was feeling very well. He said to me, Father Carlo, I am certain that Carlo Coutis's hand helped me in all of this. Through the Eucharistic Miracles exhibition, many people have learned about Carlo online. But Benjamin Taft, a pilgrim from Minnesota, met Carlo offline. He was looking for a Eucharistic adoration in Assisi and found the Church of St. Mary Major, where he also encountered Carlo. I think he's very much uh, going to be an inspiration of the, the youth of today because there's so many people who are getting uh, hooked on on the electronics and the, the apps that are out there. They're searching for an image uh, of themselves. Uh, like Carlos talks about, uh, everybody needs to uh, find their own, their own being rather than trying to make a copy of another person. I also had that same struggle and when I was growing up as like I, I, I thought I needed to be a copy of another person and, and struggled with who I was for a person and, and uh, I think it's great to, like I say, it's great to have a witness like Carlos out there to uh, show that you, you can be your own person and that we need more people uh, to, to be able to do different things. We can't all do the same thing, otherwise the body of Christ will not be able to thrive. Scott Fjall, a seminarian from the Diocese of Austin, Texas, now at the Pontifical North American College in Rome, discovered Carlo during his retreat in Assisi. He says that he's impressed at how Carlo embraced his sufferings. I think he lived with a great love. He carried a heavy cross, but I think his story teaches us that our cross can be, can be gifts to others because once we go through something difficult, we know what someone else is going through and we can help them. I think his life has been a witness and a testament to that. I, as usual, am saying that Carlo is my little teacher because he is teaching me so much, above all to rediscover two great treasures in my life, the Eucharist and love for the Virgin Mary. He was able to say the rosary every day and also go to mass every day. And then, another thing that comes to me so much is his totality in God. For him, there was no halfway. It was all or nothing. When he said before he died that he didn't mind dying yet, so young, because he hadn't lost even a minute of his life doing things that don't please God. And he said, to always be close to Jesus, that's my life plan. And this strikes me very much. I too want that totality in God. Antonia Salzano, 
Carlo's mother, testifies that for Carlo, even the news of his own death was a source of joy. Carlo, Carlo, when they told him that he had leukemia, that it was a disease that he could even die of, he smiled and said, the Lord gave me a beautiful alarm clock, as if to say, my time has come. Then he said, I'm not coming out of this alive, but mum, I will give you many signs, don't worry. He performed the first miracles on the day of his funeral, where there were many people who prayed for him, who prayed for him, to help him because he already had this reputation. The church was so full that many had to stay outside. So a lady who had breast cancer without chemo prayed to him, then she went away. Another lady could not have children, she was 45 years old. She prayed to Carla and became pregnant. These are the first fruits of his intercession. Certainly many people remember this funeral. It seemed more like a party than a funeral. But indeed, I think the festivity was because Carla then ended up in heaven immediately, as he had asked the Lord, I offer my sufferings for the Pope and the Church in order to not go to purgatory, but to go directly to heaven, and therefore I believe that the Lord listened to him. Like his funeral, the beatification will be part of 17 days of festivities. The program of the festivities from October 1st to October 17th will be very intense days of visit. It is out of the ordinary that the tomb will be open and we will be able to see his body that was discovered to be fully intact, not intact, but integral having all its organs. Work was done to the face but it is nice to see that for the first time in history, we will see a saint dressed in jeans, sneakers, and a sweater. Absolutely, this is the first time, and this is a great message for us. We can feel holiness, not as a distant thing, but as something very much within everyone's reach, because the Lord is the Lord of everyone. There will be two strong aspects of these 17 days, Eucharistic adoration during the days and the night vigils of Eucharistic adoration in the entire of city of Assisi. In fact, we have called this event Assisi, the Eucharistic city. And in those days and those nights, all the churches of Assisi will be opened with the possibility to encounter Jesus in the Eucharist from 7 p.m. to midnight. And then on the 10th and then on the 12th in the upper basilica of St. Francis at 4.30 p.m., there will be the liturgical celebration or feast of Carlo Acutis, of blessed Carlo Acutis. The Mass will be presided by our bishop here. And then for the closing, there will be the Eucharistic celebration on the 17th, also celebrated by our bishop, and at the end, the tomb of Carlo will be closed. Carlo used to say that the Eucharist was his highway to heaven, and indeed, through the Eucharist, Carlo achieved heaven and now offers his example to all of us.